let's get <laughs> this started. Okay, we have given you our review of Joker Full Ado, uh, better known as Joker 2. Um, this is the continuation of or the sequel to the film Joker, which never needed a sequel. It was a, a much better film than anybody thought it would be. And the spoilers here will, I think, let you know definitive definitively there will not be a joker three <laughs> so um before we get into the spoilers alan uh tell us a little more um about the at least the third act the third act yeah you're saying yeah so third act uh it, it, let me say i'm trying to think exactly where that starts but we're we're in the trial and essentially the third act is the turn of Arthur Fleck uh, when he basically, you know, I, I think the, the movie up to this point is him kind of embracing the persona of the Joker uh, so much so that he is gaining a following and he is, uh, you know, he, he has the girl Harley Quinzel here, Lee. Right. Um, and, uh, and he, I think after a massive beat, uh, after an appearance on a television show, um, he realizes that he's not up for the task and he backs off. And that's kind of the third act is, you know, it's where Arthur Fleck becomes Beta once again and uh, and how everyone starts turning on him. And and I think that this, that this was the moment where I realized that uh, if there's any moment that's going to break lore and make DC fans go nuts, it's this point. Because this is where... Uh, Arthur Fleck does not become Joker where Joker is no longer Joker. And, um, and it's kind of a, 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 the ending has a lot of pathos, but it's not Joker. And, and even I, even though I liked it up into this point, realized that this is where, this is where it just going to turn on everybody. And uh, I think that's kind of the, the sad, I, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I was disappointed at the turn uh, in the third act. Yeah, I was disappointed too. And then it it it's it, um well, I mean, starting with Mr. Puddles, the highlight of the movie and a scene where nobody sings, Mr. Puddles is interrogated by Arthur Fleck. Um and they have kind of a, a moment that um uh was kind of touching and also funny at the same time and bizarre. Yeah. They, I should say that that was the turn. That was the moment of the turn for Right, Arthur right. Fleck. And then, of course, uh, later on, there's an explosion, and they break him out. And there's uh, the, in the in the courtroom, there's an explosion. Harvey Dent is, you see, he's injured. Joker escapes with a guy dressed as Joker. He has inspired an uprising, a movement that he's now um, begrudgingly the head of. He's inspired people mm -hmm. to dress in this makeup. And basically, you know, um, look at causing chaos like Joker did. So then he gets brought back in prison only to get stabbed to death and murdered by a guy. And you could, they, they foreshadow it in the beginning. Yeah. This guy's kind of creepy. And then he carves his, the smile on his face into his own face to, um, I guess become the real Joker. It doesn't really matter at that point, but Arthur Fleck isn't the Joker who will go up against Batman because mm -hmm. if what we're seeing is reality, he's dead. And that's the end. Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't, when he, when he went beta, he didn't, he didn't become the man who could go up against a Batman. Right. Yeah. And, and then this explosion, this is the other thing about uh, the explosion is a massive event in the movie it is a significant event, uh, event because you, you remember it. Uh, the problem is, is it felt like the only reason the explosion happened was so that he can have one last moment with Lady Gaga with it. With yeah. Her. Yeah. And then he, and then where's he wind up? He's back in jail. Yeah. It, know, it's it, it's kind of just like, yeah. It's, you know, to do something that big and that massive, 
the moment of, hey, I want my girl back, uh, just tells you that that there's a lot of missteps in the script and the story. Um, you know, the, the more and more I think about it, what I liked about this movie was just, uh, what they saying? I mean, look, we're the Carpenters. You got George Gershwin. You have Cole Porter. You have a lot of these classic movies, uh, classic songs, Broadway songs that I love. Uh, have listened to for a, a massive portion of my life, uh, and it's being done here in in Joker, and I like that. And uh, and I'm the as I think about it, this is this is the only reason I like this movie. It's the music. Well, I did not like the music. Um, it did not advance the, the story. Mm -hmm. Not even a weird like. Look how dark this is. Let's sing happy songs so they're yeah. ironic, which is an indie film trope. That is totally an indie film trope. Yeah. I mean, like, it felt like a cabaret. Uh, yeah. You're, you're right. The, the songs the songs don't progress the movie because they're not original songs. They're, they're covers of classics. Right. Um, and it feels that way. And it felt that way. And I think that's what I liked was the, it, the cabaret aspect of it all. Um, but there's so much surrounding it that was just so disappointing. Yeah, I, I can't recommend it. Did not need a sequel at all. And it it also, I almost think if you saw the first movie and you liked it, don't see this movie mm. because it will ruin your impression of the last film. And, and really, um, if this somehow connected to the Batman, right, in mm -hmm. some way that the guy who kills Arthur Fleck in prison and carved his face. Is that if that's the origin of the Joker, that's kind of lame. I, I actually like the idea with Heath Ledger's Joker that we never know the origin. Mm -hmm. It's a mystery. He tells a different story every time people, he, he, his origin comes up or how he got these scars, right? Mm -hmm. Like I thought that was a great addition. And as for lore breaking, I don't care. It's fine. If you look at the 80, 80 year history of Batman, the character is 80. How many years is it? Like I think it's 85 years. Um, um, there's people, there are runs of the comic. There's the bat, even the 66 Batman TV series that add to the lore. For example, commissioner Gordon was not a character in the comic books. That character was added to the 66 Batman TV series as a narrative device so they could introduce the villain of the week. And then Gordon was from the from the TV series, worked into the comics, and even Harley Quinn. Paul Dini created the character of Harley Quinn in the animated series as someone that, for the Joker to play off of and talk to, right? And mm -hmm. so then Harley Quinn worked her way, that character, into the comics and, of course, other movies. So these things build on the lore. So when you've got a character that's, you know, going to be 100 years old, right, in 15 years, um, adding to the lore is is a good thing, right? I, I, I applaud that. You know, it's not breaking canon. It's adding to the canon. So I will, I will defend that. And that's, that's a nerd debate. To have. See, I won't. Uh, so I'll, I'll take the other side. Uh, the way Arthur Fleck ends up is not Joker. That's what I'm uh, saying. That, you know what I'm that's saying? why it he breaks isn't. the floor. That's I why. Mean, it... He's dead. He's dead. He can't. No, 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 no. The, not the death of Joker. I get that. Right. But it's the person of the Joker. Right, it, it, right. You know, like when you think of Cesar Romero, uh, as Joe, you don't imagine that guy becoming what Arthur Fleck ultimately becomes. Yeah. And to me, that's why it breaks lore. Uh, because, because you, you, you shouldn't even call the character Joker. Um, you know, if you had just told the story and not used the Joker, uh, IP, uh, you probably have a much better experience with it than this. Cause you see, cause there's a character arc between the two movies. Um, but when you attach Joker to it and when you have, when you have an expectation of what the Joker is and they don't fulfill that expectation, in fact, they go against that expectation, you've now broken the lore of it. Uh, that's why I think, um, you know, they, they, made the, they made the mistake by making, calling this a Joker movie. 
Yes, and I'll, I'll add one last thing that I don't think people will mind necessarily if lore is broken, not canon lore. Mm -hmm. If this is a big if, an important thing, if you are true to the character, mm -hmm. right? Um, right? Even the Lord of the Rings movies, the Peter Jackson ones, you know, the good ones, the ones worth seeing, they are true to those characters, the spirit of those characters, even though it's not fully exact with, it's not um, going exactly by the book, right? Mm -hmm. But the characters are true. Um, that's why I think people liked the first movie yeah. is because, oh, that feels like a version of the Joker. And there have been, look, I like the Cesar Romero Joker for its time. Mm. I like Jack Nicholson. Uh, I like his version of the Joker. I like Keith Ledger is the, is the goat. He is the best Joker by far. Uh, Jared Leto, probably the worst Joker. And then the, well, the deleted scenes uh, with Barry Kilgan from the Batman was, I'm glad they never showed it. There's a reason that they never showed it. But why I think people responded so well, it's not just uh, the first movie is about mental illness and class disparity and um, lonely and forgotten people. And it dealt with those themes in a, in a really emotional way, as well as building a Joker character. And this movie is a mess. So Yeah, well, I mean, this movie is about PTSD. It's about trauma, um, which is not a Joker story. Uh, you right. know, I will agree with you. The first movie, the, where Arthur Fleck ends up at the end, is a Joker movie. He is the Joker. Um, this one is not. Even at the beginning of the movie, when he's just melancholy in, in prison, you just don't get the sense he's, he's Joker. And he doesn't become Joker until he realizes that he has a following. Uh, and that a girl likes him because of that. Um, and again, but that's not true to the character. That's that's to your point. Joker 2 isn't true to the character at all. And I think that's why it fails. Or a big reason why it fails. Well, um, I think both of us do not. Well, no, I don't recommend the movie, but you do like. You uh, do if you like, like, if you like Cole Porter, George Gershwin, and a lot of the classic Broadway tunes, uh, I would recommend this movie. <laughs> I don't recommend it. And I, I, you know, look, I was, I know a lot of, there was advanced word. It was not very good. I was skeptical, but I'm optimistic. I was optimistic about it, but um, ultimately um, it didn't work for me. So it, it's a pass.